Hello, welcome to this webinar. My name is uh, Damiano Rossi. I'm the head of application at Dolomite Microfluidics. Dolomite is a microfluidic company based in north of London, Cambridge area. Um, we design and manufacture uh, microfluidic component for several applications. We are particularly um, interested in and focus on the application around particle uh, engineering, particle production for drug delivery and drug application. And to do so, we use as a tool a uh, microfluidic system. That one of them is the one you see here in front of me. Um, so today's webinar is about uh, the use of one of our system for the production, reproducible and controllable production of liposomes particle, nanoparticle, and larger micro-sized particle for drug encapsulation, drug release. So the webinar is structured in three main parts. We're gonna go through uh, a brief presentation. Uh, and then after that, we will move in front of the system. I will describe the system, how it works, how can we use the several components uh, for the controllable production of particle. And then the last part will be a section dedicated to question that you might have. At the end, I will be answering to those questions. So let's move to the presentation. Okay. So yeah, the title, uh, yeah, the presentation is uh, microfluidic production of liposomes for drug controllable drug encapsulation. We're going to talk about, first of all, a quick introduction about the, uh, the, the company and our team, uh, and then uh, description of the system that we have, uh, the possibility to scale up production using our tools, and then the flexibility offered by the Dolomite uh, particle uh, formation system, and then conclusion. So the particle Dolomite particle engineering team is a team formed by chemists, mechanical chemical engineer, and we are focused on the uh, production of nano and micro particle that have high performance, and we can produce those with high precision. We can decide and we, uh, which is the target of the size that we want to shape the structure. And to do so, we use microfluidic and flow chemistry as a main tool. Uh, we are particularly focused on the biomedical and pharmaceutical industry. We also have standard products that we sell together with the system, such as emulsion stabilizer, uh, surfactant. Uh, we advise customers on their application, and which is the best setup they need to have based on their application, what they want to achieve. And we also undertake proof of principle studies uh, to prove that our system, our microfluidic system work, and we can actually translate their process from uh, traditional process through microfluidic continuous process. Uh, why are we using microfluidic as a technology? Because uh, microfluidic offer enables the formation of monodispersed, highly controllable production of particles, uh, we can also uh, form more complex uh, uh, particles or emulsions such as multiple core shell emulsion, we can do foams or uh, produce Janus particle and so on. And we have several applications that we can, you can find on our website which describe the production of each of those. Um, so if we think about a traditional batch method of synthesis of uh, particle, here, just a, a very simple description. Um, because the volume is quite large, when we want to induce a certain nucleation event within the bulk, within the volume, because the heat capacity is quite large, it's very, and it's difficult to trigger precise event of nucleation and decide, uh, um, and also uh, the control the growth of those particles. Because the volume is large, some particle might start nucleate in a corner of the volume, and then in another point, you have a uh, different nucleation event, which occurs later on. And therefore, because of this non-homogeneous system, we end up with a, uh, a particle system, which is uh, uh, polydispersed. So let's say we have a range of reaction condition, which leads to a range of particle sizes, which is not ideal for certain application, particular for uh, drug delivery uh, application. 
in which we have a drug encapsulated within the particle, we want to a control release of this drug within for a certain time. This is something that can be done when if we translate the process, the traditional process of synthesis from batch to continuous flow. Uh, and here an image, for instance, of a microfluidic chip. We use narrow channel geometries, narrow uh, spaces to induce the formation or to promote the formation nucleation event within the small space of the microfluidic glass chip. In that situation, that condition, we can decide uh, where nucleation has to occur and how long we can let the particle reside within the chip and so how much those particles can grow till a certain size. Um, rapid mixing can nicely be uh, set and yeah, in this condition we are in laminar condition, low Reynolds number, so all the fluid stream are laminar and therefore uh, there's no mixing, no chaotic mixing, which induce, uh, so the production of particle that we end up having, it's uh, monodispersed. All particles have the same diameter. Um, if we uh, move to liposome particle production, so uh, using microfluidic technique, uh, well, first, uh, just a quick introduction about liposomes. Uh, we all know that liposomes are uh, vesicular, nano, and microparticle formed by phospholipid B layers. We, there are different formulations that can be used that are particularly uh, suitable for the encapsulation of both hydrophilic and hydrophobic drugs. Uh, so that's the reason why are widely employed, employed as drug delivery uh, vector system. Um, we can attach, we can uh, on the surface of the, uh, of the liposomes, some ligands to target specific sites, and also we can pegylate uh, the, the phospholipids uh, with some, uh, to improve the uh, water solubility and uh, improve also the, sorry, the, to minimize the enzymatic degradation of this particle once they are introduced into the human body. Um, so some particles uh, or phospholipids uh, can be also form electrostatic complex with DNA and so they're particularly suitable for gene delivery application and vaccines and they we find application of liposomes in many areas particularly in cancer therapy uh, and in the, as a vaccine in viral vaccine application. Um, so let's move to the actual production of those particles using the what's, what is called uh, MHF, microfluidic hydrodynamic flow focusing method. So we basically, it's a very simple uh, approach that we use in our uh, system. So we basically start with a, uh, a stream of uh, lipid that are dissolved in alcohol, typically ethanol or IPA, and drugs can be dissolved together with the uh, mixture of uh, lipid mixture. And then we flow uh, these stream within a, a junction, which is here the schematic you see, the schematic as you can see here in these slides, and we can focus and form uh, um, uh, a laminar focus stream in a small narrow channel with the use of some PBS or buffer aqueous solution. So the fact that we can produce this nice laminar stream with precise uh, supersaturation gradient uh, allows us to form the nanoparticle and induce self-assembly of this vesicle in a precise point of the microfluidic chip. And it's been reported in the literature that this gradient of supersaturation can be actually changed by playing with the total flow rate of uh, water plus the lipid ethanol stream and also uh, by playing with the flow rate ratio between the water and ethanol flow rate. By playing with those two parameters, adjusting those two parameters, we can change the size of the vesicle that we can form in the, in the, in the microfluidic glass chip. I'm going to show you later some result, but that's more the, just to give you an overview of the approach that we use. Uh, so this is the system uh, layout. So we have a picture of our uh, chip and our junction MHF setup. So the chip is a glass uh, chemical inert microfluidic device. Uh, the fluids which is placed within the, the this rectangular 
what we call H interface, which fluidically seal the channel and the old chip within this small space and allows uh, user to control uh, to plug tubing from the goes from the chip to the pump. The pump are what pressure driven pump and the fluid are stored within two small reservoir and we can adjust the flow rate and achieve different flow condition within the chip, different uh, flow rate ratio and total flow rate, which leads to different and controllable size uh, production of uh, our lipids. Um, so here is the schematic, the lipid string comes from left to right and then the PBS equal solution from top and the bottom. And then we have a laminar uh, focus stream produced in the middle. Um, here is the how the system looks like, but I will show you later on the table. Uh, so it's formed by pumps, a microscope, high speed microscope, and then an interface with tubing uh, that uh, connect the chip to the pumps. And then the software, the FCC, uh, Flow Control Center software, with which we can control both pump and the microscope. And basically have a global overview on the system uh, across the whole system uh, and particle production. So here are some results that shows, for instance, for typical for cationic formulation with phospholipon and DDAB, dissolved in ethanol, and we are using a PBS aqueous stream. Um, and this result shows a trend of size from 250 nanometer down to 100 nanometer with the MHF chip. Um, at different flow rate. Uh, we can see how nicely we can tune the size by playing with those parameters and get uh, a reproducible and stable formation of uh, vesicles with a small PI. If uh, we want to get smaller sizes uh, of our lipids, we can basically plug within the H interface that I showed you before uh, another chip geometry, which is quite similar to the previous one, but with an additional mixing stage, which is add afterwards, which improve the mixing of the two streams and allows to us to achieve smaller sizes uh, between 120 down to 60 nanometer, st still with a small P PI and again, adjusting the relative flow rate. Uh, if we want to scale up the production, um, is it possible to do so? Uh, using the Talos, what we call Talos high throughput system. So in the previous slide, the typical total flow rate that we are uh, uh, targeting is around a few ml per minute, but we can increase the throughput going to uh, up to liters per minute. And what we do, uh, to do so, what we, what we have, it's this manifold device that you can see here on the right side. So you can see there are different modules uh, we can can put together with some lateral frame that can be plugged to the same pump and uh, that I showed you before. And so basically the fluid is equally spread across all of this module and each module has uh, a chip with multiple junction, uh, each of them working at the same time, making, making uh, liposomes in the, and particle in a reproducible and controllable way. So all of this junction works in parallel and make and allows us to scale up the production to a liter per minute. So uh, it's the way we have in uh, Dolomite to scale up production of our particle system. Um, and here's some results as well, uh, showing a region of sizes from 100 to 180 nanometer. Like we can achieve playing with different uh, flow rate ratio still with a small PI and a higher, obviously a much higher total, a total flow rate. And you can see the shift of the DLS data size distribution when changing the flow rate, we can actually tune the size of the particle that we get. Um, I will show you this system later uh, during the live demo. Um, and then another thing which is worth mentioning is the fact that we can, uh, the same setup, since it's quite flexible, we can even target different kind of particle sizes and also different kind of polymer particle 
or even different kind of liposome structure. In this slide, uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but just to show you that it's possible to produce some giant vesicles and giant liposomes using uh, an approach which is uh, widely quite popular in the literature. So we basically form a droplet uh, having an aqueous core uh, in a continuous medium using a different kind of chip and we dissolve the lipid into the continuous phase and then we use uh, several steps to form uh, multilamellar vesicles by dripping those aqueous uh, droplet into uh, two vials that contains uh, an aqueous uh, interface separated by an oil phase the droplet goes down and so basically there is a formation of uh, a lipid lamellar stream across the whole uh, aqueous uh, initial uh, lamella. Um, so is it possible using different geometries um, to, of chip to achieve different kind of particle, not only liposomes? We have experience and we develop protocol to form hydrogel particle PLGA micro and nanoparticle, as well as uh, yeah, polyacrylamide, as I said, is another kind of hydrogel, soft and R beads, and many others for most of them for in drug delivery and drug encapsulation in, that are typical application we are kind of uh, specialized. Um, so in conclusion, our team is um, with the system that we have, we can target key application in the area of liposome and particle formation for polymeric, uh, but even non-polymeric micro and nanoparticle for API encapsulation, but in the industry such as food cosmetics and uh, pharmaceutical industry. And we are a team with expertise which enables users to achieve higher performance and reproducible particle formation. And also, is it possible to scale up the production of uh, the particle from an R&D standard system, which is the one uh, uh, I have here set up uh, on the webinar, but we can also increase the throughput using uh, a scale up to pilot plant production level system, which is the, the Talos one. So uh, now we are gonna go to the table again, and I will go through the system description. So, yeah, so um, so the, the Dolomite system is formed by, let's say, three main parts. We have uh, a microscope with a chip and pumps, and everything can be controlled using a, a software, which is the FCC. So the pumps here, two pumps, a pressure-driven pump, which means that there are no mechanical elements uh, that are involved in the uh, in the pumping system, which means that the fluid can be nicely driven from the small reservoir where the two fluids are contained to the chip in a pulseless and smooth uh, matter. So the fluids are contained within those two reservoirs. So if we have, if you think about the application I was mentioning before, there is one fluid, which is the aqueous fluid, and then another fluid, which is the lipid stream. Uh, the lipids are dissolved in ethanol and are kept within the small reservoir, and so the water is in the other one. Um, so we have a compressor, uh, which is basically it's the gas supply. So those two pumps are connected to a compressor, uh, but you can use another gas line if you want to work in an inert uh, at atmosphere, like uh, you can plug to hair, argon, helium, um, so the pressure is adjust in a way that the fluid are delivered from the reservoir through the tubing inside the chip. Uh, there are two small sensors which uh, measure the flow rate and give the set point to the pump which adjust the pressure in order to meet the flow rates that you want. The flow rate can be specified manually here on the pump or on the software. Um, I will show you how to play with the software and play and change the flow rate later on. But basically, once the fluid reaches the chip uh, with the tubing, the soft well, the soft, the, we, you, we can image uh, the chip using the high speed microscope. And you can see what is uh, the, 
what we get in front of the, uh, on the on the FCC. Um, so, is it possible in case we want to warm up? the lipids because are not very soluble and so you need to increase the temperature to plug those pumps to a reservoir which is a remote reservoir like this uh, which can be placed on top of a, a, a knot plate having a steerer inside and we can simply plug this reservoir to the pump using some extra tubing um, the solution are normally contained to small via like this which goes inside the reservoir this can be sealed like that and then uh, connected to the pump and pressurized. Uh, so there is a possibility to control the temperature while we are flowing our lipid stream through the chip uh, and also to control the temperature of the uh, uh, where basically, um, yeah, of the, on the chip unit. So in this case, uh, what you see here is just uh, uh, an holder but uh, we have a possibility to control the temperature of the of the chip by plugging a TC unit, which is a Pelti element, which allows us to set different temperature and also keep the temperature of the chip uh, at the desired value. And therefore, you can run the same application at different in different conditions, at different temperature. So as you see, the system is flexible in this way that you can upgrade uh, the the basic uh, system with some extra bits and then run uh, uh, your application at different temperature by uh, plugging those extra parts. Um, so if you want to scale up the production, as I was mentioning before, you can use the Talos uh, high throughput system, which is a manifold device like this one. And we have different modules that can be combined together. One, two, and three, but we can add more up to 10. So this is a typical chip that comes with the Talos system, which has multiple junction in parallel, and you can plug and clamp this chip using this very user-friendly clamp. And if you want to add extra module, you just remove the first frame and add the other part altogether. One, two, and then you form a sort of sandwich device. And you scale up the production from one up to 100. The system that is here is the standard R&D system, the one which is actually here. But and the extra bit that I show you afterwards are sort of upgrade part that we can add on top of this. Um, yeah, um, the chip which is here, the glass microfluidic chip, um, it's placed within an H interface, which is this one. So the tubing are connected using those linear connector. It's kind of difficult to see uh, on the camera, but basically there are holes and then there is a gasket on the other side. You can insert the tubing from this side and then align the tubing with the gasket on this linear connector and then the same on the other linear connector. The chip is here and you can plug the chip in the middle of the H interface and then connect the tubing on left side, connect the other tubing on the right side, seal everything. And then if those tubing are connected to the pump, you can drive your solution from the pump to the chip in a, having a fluidically sealed system. And if you want to change application or you want to change the chip, you simply unscrew those linear connectors, you remove the glass microfluidic device which define your application, you plug another one like this one, a droplet generator for instance to make for the formation of giant liposomes, you tie the linear connector and then you have basically swap application. Um, yeah, so this is the, how the pump look like. This is spare one. Um, there is a flow sensor here, 
which if you want to change different, we have different range of flow sensor, which works in different range, obviously, of flow rates. So if you want to work in the higher range of flow rates using Talos, you just need to have a different flow sensor, but you can simply clamp this flow sensor on the sensor interface, which sit on top of the pump. Uh, yeah, this is the pump, which has the reservoir, which is embedded on the hardware. Um, so if you want to try, well, store your solution inside, you just need to put your solution here in a vial, and then this is the tubing, which goes inside the vial. The pump is connected to the gas, to the compressor, and the pressure is adjusted in a way that the fluid goes uh, from the reservoir to the tubing inside the chip. Um, yeah, that's basically everything I want to show you on the hardware side, but I think the last section will be on the FCC, uh, which basically it's the uh, software that you see here, but we can share the screen and so I can play with the software and show you how the system, uh, how actually, uh, how we can control the pump, how we can change the flow rates. So I'm gonna open the valve. You can see as soon as I open the valve, you can see the focus laminar thing, which is produced in the middle of the channel. I can increase and see, you can see the laminar stream of aqueous stream coming from top and left, and then the lipid dissolving ethanol coming on the middle central channel. So we can change the flow rate, uh, and therefore we can get different supersaturation gradient, and, and therefore obtain a different uh, uh, dimension of the of the nanovesicles that we have, and we can measure at the end. So to do so, we have two tabs, one on top left and the other one on top right, one which is dedicated to the control of the uh, buffer solution or aqueous line, and the other one on the top right, which is dedicated to the control of the lipid um, stream. So on the y, you can, the pump can work in pressure and flow mode. So the number that you see, 500, it's the pressure inside the reservoir, the chamber, and that's the corresponding flow rate, 119 microliters per minute, which means that if you set at that pressure, you get that flow rate depending on the resistance that you have in the chip. So if you want to increase the flow rate, you just need to increase the pressure. So if I increase the pressure from 500 to, let's say 600, you can see that the flow rate increase and as a result, the laminar stream there becomes more thinner, which leads to, if you remember the chart, which I showed you before, uh, what we expect is a smaller sizes of vesicles that we, have in the, we get in the end. And again, we can increase the pressure, increase uh, the flow rate, and have even a smaller uh, laminar stream. We can get, uh, we can go back to the original um, focus stream that we got before by dropping the pressure down to 400. As you can see, you can nicely recover the original uh, uh, production that we had at the beginning. So the pump are very accurate pressure controllers. So the pump can nicely and easily adjust the pressure and achieve the desired flow rate in a fraction of seconds. It's not very convenient to work in pressure mode. What is better to do is also to switch from pressure to flow by clicking these two boxes. So in this case, you can nicely tune this, the size of particles that you want by changing the flow rates. So you just need to type the flow rate that you want, for instance, 100 for the aqueous line and let's say, I don't know, 20 for the uh, lipid stream and the pump will adjust, will, adjust the, will adjust the pressure in order to achieve uh, uh, the desired flow rate in a fraction of seconds. So here the charts that you see on the right side of each tab are sort of history of the old operation that we have undertook. So uh, since we start the experiment, you can export these uh, uh, charts on the, using a log file. And moving to the tab of the microscope, yeah, you can record 
picture, like a record video at different flow rates, uh, sorry, a different um, acquisition rate. You can take picture, uh, yeah, you can decide where to save the picture and so on. Uh, a different setting of the camera to change the shutter speed and uh, to set up the brightness that you want to operate to change the display and frame rate and also the gamma and the image clip and exposure time. Yeah, that's basically everything uh, I wanted to show you for now. Um, there will be a final session in which we will answer to your question. Uh, but yeah, if you have some more questions, feel free to drop an email to uh, Dolomite uh, or contact our one sales member that are across the whole world. So we sell uh, and provide assistance support uh, in Europe, both in US and in Asia. And we have offices uh, we have offices in, uh, across the old globe. Uh, last things, we will be at Microtas next week, so you can come to our booth. We will have this system set up, and so you can see the system working and live. So yeah. So I will move to the. Yeah, on the other side, of it, and we'll be able to answer your question. Thank you for for being here. Thanks for. Yeah, attending the webinar. Thanks, bye.